The NBA is just around the corner, and because ball is life, there's always something new to discuss. And for this one, it's fun. CBS Sports has released their annual top 100 list. Get your debate takes hot because here we go shaking things up. Nikola Jokic coming in at number one, Giannis at two, Steph three, Luka at four, and KD at five. To be clear, so everyone knows, this list compiled by the CBS Sports staff is not based on past performances, but rather based on how they see them performing this upcoming season. So you might have seen LeBron James sitting there at 12 and might have been a little bit shocked and wondering, hey, what's going on there? But we will get into all of that. We're going to have a lot of fun. Chris Walker joining us, our coach, Avery Johnson. Johnson and Tim Doyle all ready to tap in and get these things underway. And I want to start with LeBron James. King James, because I feel that last year, you look at the rankings, he was seventh. Right. And then you look at it this year, and he is 12th. Personally, I feel shocked. I feel offended that he is not higher than 12. We're seeing eye to eye right now. Yeah, Chris, I, I, I want to start with you. How do you feel about this? Listen, I, I know we got Avery there, so I don't want Avery to get mad at yeah. me because I know he loves LeBron as much as I do. But I'll tell you this. I, I did a little research. 29, 8, and 7 last year. We were rounding up a little bit, right? The year before, 38 and 6. I, where's the decline? And right. I'd like to know, you know, Father Time, they say, is undefeated, but he's doing a great job of defeating Father Time. LeBron James is clearly, you know, must see TV everywhere he goes. I, again, this is a projection. Yes. I'm an analytics guy. This is a projection. The Lakers are going to be better this year, mm. and he may not have to score as much, which is why I think this is a little bit tainted. But at the end of the day, LeBron James clearly one of the top 10 players in the NBA. Yeah. Yeah, clearly. This is. This this poll has gotten off to a bad start, all right? <laughs> Chris, Tim, and I, did we have a vote? Uh, I, I didn't get the uh, I need to call the, the producers and the big bosses at CBS because somebody's not seeing what I'm seeing. I played in the NBA for 16 years, coached in the NBA with two different teams. LeBron James is easily a top 10 player. He's, when, you, when you look at his stats, how many guys over the last three seasons have even shot 50% from the field? He's, he's a walking double-double, and, and on a lot of nights, a triple-double guy. He still plays both ends of the floor. Um, sure, you know, last year he played in 55 games. You want him to play, hopefully, in 65 games or more. But um, when you have a poll until LeBron James retire, when he retires, then you can put him in, in the top 15 or 25. But as long as LeBron James is active playing in the NBA, he will always be a top player. Zach, I know why I'm here, all right? Because I'll give out names. I'll give out names of who LeBron is ahead of, okay? Because Chris will say he's top 10, I agree. Coach will say he's top 10, I agree. But here's who he's ahead of. Devin Booker, okay? Only one NBA Finals. Amazing score. Is he the same all-around player? Even at this point in his career, I'm not sure. Damian Lillard, amazing score again, okay? Zero NBA Finals. Zero, I repeat. And Jimmy Butler, I love Jimmy, and he deserves to be in the top 10, but he's not ahead of LeBron James. Two NBA Finals, zero championships, okay? So I have named three guys ahead of him. There they are right there, 8, 9, and 10, that LeBron is ahead of. 10, Billy Bob said it in Varsity Blues, 10 <laughs> NBA Finals LeBron has been to. He's 4-6 and six lifetime. Oh, by the way, who did he lose to? Well, arguably the greatest team ever in the Golden State Warriors, three times and he lost to the San Antonio Spurs twice and obviously they were a dynasty during that time frame so if you don't know just go back and check out LeBron's last game from last season it was a loss to the Denver Nuggets oh that's right the NBA champion Denver Nuggets guys he had 40 points 10 rebounds and nine assists I get it, CBS. We need clicks, but you got it all wrong with LeBron not being in the top 10. Yeah, I agree. I think we can't doubt the king. I'm not going to. We'll be able to see and figure that out as the season progresses and we get into it next month. I think when you look at the top 100 list and you see who has the most amount of players on that, and that's the Celtics. They have six inside that top 100. Jason Tatum with the highest ranking at seventh. Coach, you see this team. You see all this talent. I mean, should we just be expecting a title to be making its way to Boston? Oh, absolutely.
Absolutely. You know, this past Saturday night, you saw the University of Texas go into Tuscaloosa and beat the Alabama Crimson Tide in football. Oh, you know, on the same point, they looked the part. They look just as talented as the Alabama football team. The Celtics, they, they same thing. They looked the part. These guys can match up with anybody. They can play a variety of styles of basketball. They can play half court, fast break. Jason Tatum on any night can arguably be the best player in the NBA, especially if he doesn't turn the ball over. Jalen Brown just got that monster contract. Uh, Derek White has had his moments. Uh, now you add Porzingis to the mix. You, he was going to add that ability to play that spread five basketball. Now you can have a five man that can play a little bit like Jokic from behind the three point line, or you can go really big with he and Robert Williams. So versatility, talent, they look the part. They've significantly improved their coaching staff, especially with uh, adding uh, Sam Cassell uh, to that coaching staff and also uh, Coach Lee. So I, I, I really like the way the Celtics stack up. And because they have six players on this list, nothing should be expected except a Celtics going to the uh, NBA Finals. Yeah, but there's no value there, Coach. You know what I mean? We've seen this movie before where the Celtics get to the point and then they can't get over the hump. So when I look at their NBA title odds, it's not something that I'm really to just jump right in the water with, especially for Christos Porzingis. 70-plus games once in his career. Now, last year he played 65 games, and obviously he's going to be the giant X factor. If he is healthy, I want to see how he's going to be able to dance with both Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Yes, they deserve a ton of respect, but Chris Walker, I'm not ready to crown them just yet. <laughs> well, listen, if anybody's going to bet on it, I would take your advice on that. I'll say this for the Celtics. They've done a tremendous job uh, of keeping their talent. Marcus Smart, I believe, all right, I wasn't a great Marcus Smart fan, but in that locker room, you need a guy with some toughness, some culture, and I think he provided that. The question is, who's going to be that X factor? Derek White is there. Malcolm Brogdon is there. But again, that X factor of that leader, right? People talk about Tatum, and they talk about Brown, and something's missing. Now, do I think anybody can beat them in the East? I don't think, th uh, think so. Adding Porzingis, as uh, uh, Doyle alluded to, he has been often injured, but if he stays healthy, and I'll tell you a guy who's not on this list that was on there last year was Horford. Right. So they still have some pieces there. Uh, you know, Brad Stevens has constructed a great team, paid Jalen Brown, but the question is, without Marcus Smart, without that leader, that X factor, can they get, again, we're talking about the NBA championship, Tim and Deluda too, again, we've seen this movie before, Eastern Conference Finals, made it to the championship one year, the question is, can they get over the hump, and who will it be? You know, Coach Avery will tell you, it'll be LeBron, the old guy in the Lakers, and we'll see what happens. That roster certainly looking a lot different out there in Boston and the league will look a lot different when you see these guys suit up because there are three rookies who are inside the top 100. The highest one is Victor Wimbenyama at 58. Chet Holmgren didn't play last year because of injury so he will be a rookie this year at 68 and Scoot Henderson just sliding in there at 97. Um, I think that this is an interesting time and I want to first get out and say coach you know I have so much love for the folks out there in San Antonio. I am so happy that they have Wimby. How do you feel though seeing a 58 next to his name knowing that these projections are based on how they think the future will go out. Do you think that he should be even higher than a 58 maybe. I think this is right in line. Again, we've never seen Wimby play in an NBA game. Sure, we saw what happened in the summer league. He got off to a slow start, and then he went to work in that second game. So I'm okay uh, with this ranking right now uh, at 58, considering all of the guys that's in front of him. But I will not be okay with a 58 at the start of the 24-25 season. I'm going to be looking for somewhere in the top 30 because this guy is so skilled. Rarely have we seen a guy at 7'4 with this type of ability. But for this year, I'm okay with 58. I would defer, I would defer to uh, Coach Avery. Coach, by the way, I was watching some old NBA TV and I saw you with the short shorts on uh, around with the Spurs <laughs> when David Robinson was playing. They had the big 50-point game against the Suns. But you know what's interesting to me? When LeBron James came out and they're you know liking him and making the parallel of him to LeBron, 
in, I don't know, it was 2003, would LeBron have been 58? Mm. That's the question. Would he have been yeah. 58? Because they're saying Wimby's a generational talent. Now, there's no way I'm looking at that list that if he's the talent that he says they are, and we're talking projection, yep. there is no way that he would be 58. He's going to play a ton of minutes, going to have a ton of production. I think he's going to be a superstar. Again, that would be a learning curve. But at the end of the day, some of the guys on the list that are ahead of him, there is no way I would clearly put him. I know he hasn't played a game yet, but this is all about expectation. And the NBA is a young game and a lot of these guys you saw Scoot Henderson on there as well these guys are gonna be very good players I would put Wimby clearly top 25 in the NBA just because of production and what pop pop got that big deal too is gonna have to you know again culture I mean teach him he's gonna have to learn a lot but at the end of the day he has so much talent and he's and he's huge yeah. and he can run and he can do everything he's like mm -hmm. Superman yeah, and he comes along, Chris, at the right time, right? This isn't the NBA of Rick Mahorn and Jeff Rulin and Bill Lambeer. Like, it lacks that physicality, and that's an advantage to Wemby because he's got the string bean arms, and, you know, he's going to have to grow into his body like Porzingis did. Very similar body when he entered the NBA, and then obviously has put on muscle. But, you know, when I see David Robinson and I see Tim Duncan, good luck, kid. Like, those are really, really big shoes to fill. Like, you know, when we think of all-time greats, this is no disrespect to David Robinson, but he rarely gets mentioned. You know, will Wemby have the same career as the Admiral? I have my doubts. I think he's going to be an excellent NBA player, but I think the hype is way too much, and I'm excited to watch him play, but is he going to be better than Tim Duncan? I don't think so. It's interesting because when you do this exercise and you're projecting where they're going to be, sometimes you just don't know. We also don't really know what's up with Chris Paul because you talk about folks that are rising. Someone who's falling is CP3. Last year, he was 18. He is 73 on the list this year. Is that Chris, his age? or is and, that... and that's exactly <laughs> what I was going to say, Chris. Do you think this fall in the rankings for him, is it because of his age or is it maybe the fit that we think he might or might not have? with the Warriors. I think it's a combination of both. You know, you start watching Chris Paul throughout the season. His name is Chris Paul. And then I revert to State Farm Chris Paul, which comes, he becomes Cliff Paul, yeah. right? And, and and at the end of the day, availability is the best ability. And in playing with the with the uh, Golden State Warriors, surely it would be great for Klay Thompson because he's a driving kick guy. They've got rid of Jordan Poole. But, you know, Steph Curry really doesn't need him. He And he needs the ball in his hands. Of course, he can run off screens and stuff. He's very dangerous. I just don't see see how it fits. Now, maybe a younger Chris Paul, you know, he has that mid-range game, and maybe it got an, another score like, like a Jordan Poole did provide. But, you know, for me, I just think that, you know, it's just a name thing. Similar to when the Lakers got Russell Westbrook and they had an old Rajon Rondo. It looks good on paper, but in reality, 82 games, playoffs, so forth and so on, also expectation. I'm a great Chris Paul fan. I love point guards. I just think when, you know, it's like the old boxer. When is the end the end? You don't have to get knocked out to say it's time to go. Yeah. And again, this is, we can celebrate him going to the Warriors. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a wrap for Chris Paul. I, he's lucky to be 73 in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, this could be a really good fit for Chris Paul with the Warriors. I think this ranking is a little bit too low. Chris Paul is easily a top, you know, 60 player. Uh, but in terms of the fit with the Warriors, the Warriors, you know, historically hasn't been a pick and roll team. And if Chris Paul would embrace maybe that reduced role, come off the bench, maybe play 24, 26 minutes, and then give them a little bit of a curveball. Whereas when he's in the game, their pick and roll team, uh, he can get to his mid range game. Uh, sometimes, you know, pair him a little bit with uh, Steph Curry. Bring him in the backcourt with Steph Curry, they're going to be too small uh, defensively. They're going to have major problems. But if he would embrace a, a reduced role, maybe that'll keep him healthy towards the end of the season because, as Chris mentioned, uh, he's he hasn't been available at the meaningful times for his team. But I think this ranking is a little bit too low for Chris Paul, somewhat disrespectful for what he's going to mean to the Warriors this year because I think he's going to fit in a little bit better than what people think. Yeah, I, I don't think Chris Paul cares, right? I mean, we're talking about Hall of Fame point guard, one of the greatest ever to play the position. It's all about a ring. And when I saw him go to Golden State, 
It reminded me of when Gary Payton, the glove, went down to Miami to team up with Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade. If you go back to that 2006 finals, you know, Gary Payton, how old was he? 38 years old. And what did he end up doing? Making a shot that turned around a series and led the Miami Heat to knock off the Dallas Mavericks. So, you know, when Gary went to Miami, his numbers declined rapidly. And I don't think Chris Paul is going to average more than 12 points a game with Golden State. But Steph Curry has never, I repeat, never played with a point guard of this ability. So, yes, his role is going to have to change, but it's going to be interesting to see how Chris, especially in the regular season, can get Steph maybe some open looks, but he's not the player that he once was. But I don't think the, the ranking really matters to him, but his role is going to be dramatically different this season. Yeah, this is crazy to see a 73, 73 next to his name next instead of uh, what we've become accustomed to seeing from Chris Paul. The CBS Sports Top 100 list is out. Chris Walker, Avery Johnson, and Tim Doyle all with us here, tapping it and checking in with us. We appreciate you for the time. That top 20, you see it there again. Nikola Jokic, that number one spot surprised maybe with LeBron James at 12 Shea Gilders Alexander ahead of him at 11 Joel B the MVP at 6 then you round out the top 20 with De'Aaron Fox who was a big mover up on the list and Bam Adebayo there at 20.